so you've got a pellet grill and you're not quite happy with the amount of smoke flavor you're getting in your meat. Today's your lucky day because I'm gonna share with you my top 11 secrets to maximize smoke on a pellet grill. Let's get into it. What's up barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Ramen Cook. Today on the channel, we're talking about pellet grills. We've got the Yoder YS640S fired up and ready to go. More importantly, we're talking about smoke and the level of smoke you get into your meat. There's a lot of pellet grill owners out there, a lot of new ones, maybe you've had it for a while, and you know the common complaint there is, I'm not getting enough smoke flavor. So today what we're doing is I've got three racks of ribs. We're gonna cook them. I'm gonna break down my secrets one by one. I'm gonna share all 11 with you, and I guarantee you, if you follow them, all of them, you're gonna turn out some great food. Secret number one. Now, if you've been smoking meat for a little while, you've probably heard of binders, and most times when you see someone prepping ribs, they're gonna use yellow mustard, or oil, or Worcestershire sauce, or something like that. Um, I can never say that word right. I don't know if anyone can, unless you're English. Anyhow, you're using something to help your rub stick. Get rid of it, you don't need it. I haven't been using one. I don't remember the last time I used it. I used to use it all the time and I did for many years, but I haven't used one in quite some time now. And you know, everyone will tell you, if you don't like yellow mustard, you're not gonna taste it. You don't need it. So these ribs, because of the flies and just time, this is not about prepping ribs or anything like that. I'm gonna do a whole video on that. So if, if you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. We're gonna do a whole video on St. Louis style ribs, but I prepped these inside. I squared them off real quick. These are uh, Dartagan, Berkshire ribs, pretty much any ribs I buy anymore. Uh, but these sat in the fridge for a little bit. So they dried out. Need my little friend called water, right? When you take these out of the pack and you prep them, they're gonna be moist. Because they're in the fridge for a little while while I was getting everything else ready, the surface got a little dry. So I sprayed with a little water. If you prep these and season them right away, you won't have to worry about that. So secret number one, no binder. Secret number two, you guys have seen me do ribs before, and I love a certain grill mate's rub. It's amazing. However, when you're using rubs that have got a whole bunch of little spices on there, you cover the surface of the meat, and it doesn't allow the smoke to penetrate properly. You still get some smoke flavor there, but you're not gonna get as much uh, as you can with just going back to the basics, salt and pepper. Secret number three, step up your pepper game. Okay, I've done this a lot on my offset, and this is two to one salt and pepper. Pepper attracts smoke. So a little bit more pepper is gonna go a long way to help pull some smoke on that meat. Now, in this case, I've been using a lot of fresh ground pepper, but on ribs, if you use a little bit too much pepper on there and it's fresh ground, it really pops because they're not cooking a long time. So this is 16 mesh store-bought pepper that I used and diamond kosher salt, two to one. And actually I'll start with the, the bottoms just to make it easier. And we've got some pitmaster treats here just so I could square off the ribs. But nice, fairly heavy coating. Now, there's a lot of people that really enjoy different rubs and what on the rub on their, on their ribs. These will be fine. You're going to get lots of smoke flavor and you can add some flavor back with a sauce. Trust me on this one. I used to be very much into rubs and I still am. There's times when I want them, but if you want to get the most amount of smoke, you got to step away from the rubs a little bit here. Let the pe pepper do the talk. And now, I didn't take the membrane off. St. Louis, I don't on these, just to give you an idea. And obviously there's not too much going on in the back. So you don't have to go crazy. And get the sides, your ends, and put a fairly heavy coating on there, okay? And you can see there's a pretty solid coating of pepper on there. It's not crazy. And to give you an idea, this was six tablespoons of pepper to three tablespoons of salt. And you can see that was enough to do all three racks and our little pitmaster treats. Now, 
it's very common to let your rub sit in your meat. And we're gonna do the same thing. Secret number four is put this meat back in the fridge. Now these are gonna go into my beer fridge, which has beer, but you know me, it's got a case of Coke in it. It's always super cold. Don't mind if I do, cheers. But I have a fridge in my garage that's super cold with beer and Coke, and I'm gonna put this meat back in there. If you put your meat on as cold as possible, it will absorb more smoke. You could actually, if you've got room in a freezer, you could put this in there for 15, 20 minutes and get it ice cold. The longer it stays cold, the more smoke it's gonna absorb. So those are gonna go in the fridge on the bottom shelf, very important, for a good 15 minutes. Secret number five, just like the Komodo Komodo and Lump, pellets matter. Now at this point in time, I've tried about eight different brands. I've settled in on Bear Mountain. That's the product I like. I also like Lumberjack. And uh, you know, I think both those companies make great pellets. Secret number six, all woods are different. Learn your woods, right? So today I'm rocking pecan, which is a mild sweet flavor, it says right on the bag. Uh, but if you go, you know, pecan, oak, hickory, mesquite, and then you get into your apples and your, your cherries and whatever, those are light as well. Um, but as you go down there, you get into some heavier flavors. So hickory and mesquite are heavier than pecan. Now I know if I follow all these 11 secrets, I'm gonna turn out some great ribs. I enjoy pecan. It's a, it's a, a, a sweet flavor. It's got some smoke to it, but I just, I really enjoy the flavor of it. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna use today. But if you're still not getting enough smoke, try going down to an oak or go down to a, a hickory. You could try mesquite. I think it might be a little much on ribs. Uh, I haven't tried it. Maybe we'll do a video on that. But play with some wood, all right? Secret number seven. To give us a little bit more of a kick, we're gonna add some additional pellets for some smoke. Now, my suggestion here is don't overdo it. Now, you know, there's a whole talk, a whole bunch of talk in the barbecue community about dirty smoke versus clean smoke. And recently there's been a little bit more of a shift where people are more open to running a little bit of a dirtier smoke. And when you use something like this pellet tube, it's adding a, a bit of a dirty smoke. Now, if you're doing a cold smoke and it's not gonna be on there very long, it's not gonna matter. I use this all the time. You guys have seen me do it with a pork chop, love it. Uh, but on a longer smoke, you don't wanna run this 100% of the time. My recommendation is to run it for about 50% of the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up with pellets. We're going to use our torch. We're gonna get it good and lit. And then we're gonna put it off on the left side and let the chamber fill up with even more smoke. And that's just gonna double our smoke output to make sure we get some smoke on there. So let's get some pellets in here. So now we've got our tube full and I'm gonna run for about three hours today. Um, maybe two and a half, but I think I'm gonna run three, get some good flavor in there, and then we're gonna run super clean smoke at the end. What, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this down on the bottom here, bring it a little closer there. And we're just gonna use a regular torch, right? And we're gonna get this lit. And I'm gonna let that go for a minute or two just so we know we've got them burning well. But what's gonna happen here is the smoke's gonna come up and come over the ribs and out the stack. And there we go. We've got a whole bunch more smoke we're gonna put in. Secret number eight. So the reason why pellet grill doesn't put out as much smoke as some of the other options out there is because it's burning a really clean fire. 
right? We've got a firebox, we've got pellets being dropped in there, and there's always a good sized flame depending what your temperature is set at. And we're dropping pellets in there, they're burning, and with a pellet grill, the more you increase that temperature, the cleaner that fire is gonna get. So what we're doing today is we're running at 200 degrees, nice and low. When you run, you know, you could run at 180, 190, 200, anything under you know, 225, you're gonna get the maximum amount of smoke, even if you don't use a smoke tube. So secret number eight is use a low temperature to maximize the amount of smoke that your pellet grill is gonna put out. Secret number nine, if you're lucky enough to have a second rack, put your food up there. What happens to heat? It rises, smoke rises. So if you put it on the second shelf, it's gonna be in more smoke. If you don't have a second rack, maybe get something to raise it up a little bit and just help elevate your food to go into the smoke a little bit more. Luckily in this case, we've got a second rack, so we're gonna put these guys on it. I don't wanna be right over top of the smoke tube. So we'll put these guys over here. Try and keep a little bit of a gap between your meat. And now we just let it cook. So a word of caution. There's a lot of smoke coming out of here right now, right? And when you can see smoke like this, that is dirty smoke. So you can, and you will, if you're not careful, oversmoke your food. So let me show you where we're at. We're two hours in. So when you're looking at these guys, you can see there is a ton of color on them, right? That color is smoke. You go too far, it's gonna get real dark and it's gonna get nasty. And when you get red like that, that tells you you got some smoke on it. So two hours in, I'm gonna get rid of the smoke tube. I've got more than enough smoke on there now and if you go too far, it gets bitter and acrid and it's not gonna be enjoyable to eat. So because of the color on there, I know I've got enough smoke on there for my personal taste. You might be able to take it a little further. I don't recommend it. I would start with less and build your way up, but you don't wanna to put too much smoke on there because you can't take it away. And if you have too much on there, you will ruin your meal. It's better to put less on there and say, ah, you know, I would have liked a little bit more and try for more next time. Secret number 10, add time. All right, so we've been cooking it 200 for a couple hours now. When you're cooking at that low temperature, right, there, there's no, there's nothing says that ribs gotta be done in four hours, six hours, eight hours. You're in control. But when you're cooking at a lower temperature, it's definitely gonna take a little bit longer. So when you wanna get maximum smoke on here, you're gonna add time to your cook. Brings us up to secret number 11. Not so secret, most of you are probably already doing this. Water, apple cider vinegar, 50-50 water and apple cider vinegar, apple juice, rum, beer, whatever you wanna spray with, spray your meat. This is doing two things. First off, as you start to get some of the crunchy edges and starts to dry out a little bit, this is adding moisture to it to keep it nice and moist. Secondary, it's cooling down the surface and it's attracting more smoke. So once you start to spray, spray frequently and that'll help add a little bit more smoke. All right, we're two hours in. What you wanna do is you wanna wait until your seasoning, that surface, dries up first because you don't want to start spraying around all your seasoning. Let's give these guys a quick spray. That's it. It's going to attract a little bit more smoke to it. So the rain decided to hold off. I figured I'd show you the results. Here's what we did. Two hours, 200 with the smoke tube. Got rid of the smoke tube, went another two and a half hours at 275. Then we wrapped, only wrapped for about 20 minutes. Kept it at 225. One I put some sauce in, the other one I just sprayed a bunch of the 50-50 uh, water apple cider vinegar. 
and then they've been resting for 30 minutes. So let's have a look. I have not looked at them yet. There's our rack here that was not sauced. I typically always sauce. So as you can see, they're both looking good. Got some good pullback on those ones. Let's bring in a little closer, have a look, and we will cut in the one. So as you can see, I mean, super juicy. All right, great smoke ring. That's the one that's got some sauce on it. Here's the other one. I mean, look at the juices that are coming off there. Super moist, beautiful smoke ring. Really, nothing to complain about at all. Really thick smoke ring, actually. Let's give this one a try. I'm sure I didn't mix them up. This is the one without any sauce on it. Good bites. Bite through. Look, that's a perfect rib. Bites through, holds together, got a little chew to it, but I can still get a clean bone. Mm. Man, we're not having any sauce on it, that's not too bad. I never cook ribs without sauce. My mom will tell you I'm saucy. I love sauce. Same thing. Cut this side way too close to the bone. Let me get another piece here. There we go. Again, like, look. That's ridiculous. Perfect rib there. Almost wants to drop off. Team bite. Had to wipe off my face. <laughs> I had drool and meat juices all over the place. Look, that smoke ring, don't lie folks. These are delicious. They're smoky, exactly what I'm looking for. And that's pecan. You could step this up more with some oak or hickory. I don't think it's needed. These turned out great. I think you should give them a try. Just take these 11 secrets, apply them to pork butts, briskets. It doesn't matter what kind of meat, it applies to all meats. But I guarantee you, if you try them, you're gonna turn out some better food. You're gonna be happier. Your family, family's gonna think you're an even better cook. And if you wanna see how I did these ribs, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step video on St. Louis style ribs. Subscribe below while you're down there. Give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this today. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.